thought I'd take a minute today to take a look at Maxwell Fire. Uh, Fire is the interactive preview engine that Next Limit just added to Maxwell with the 2.5 update that came out Monday. Uh, it's available for registered users to download right now, but um, there's no demo available yet, but there will be one out uh, soon. Um, in this case, we're going to use the Studio Max plugin in Studio Max 2011 to take a look and see how it runs uh, and what we can expect. I've got an ArcViz scene here. I'm going to kind of go through three setups or three scenes of varying complexity. Because uh, one thing I'd like to note as far as interactive previewing, I think um, most everything else out there right now is GPU based. And Maxwell's a little different, or Fire's a little different in that it's CPU only. Uh, it's not GPU and CPU, it's really just CPU. And in fact, you can dedicate certain cores just to run that. Um, so let's go ahead and pop it open. In Studio Max, it's going to come up as an active shade. Uh, this scene, I'd say, is medium um, complexity. It's about 300,000 polys. Um, the textures aren't particularly huge. You, you could get away with a GPU-based interactive setup for this scene. Let's go ahead and tweak our camera here. So, first thing to note, depth of field works within the preview. Um, Let's move around a little bit, see how interactive it is. Actually, our camera settings are a little unnatural at the moment to get that kind of depth of field. So, right here we're on high. What you've got is four quality settings. So, best, high, medium, low. Let's go down to low and just see what our difference is. You see this cleans up pretty fast. I mean, anybody who is familiar with Maxwell knows... Um, you do wait a bit for it to clean up, and it is painful to keep rendering out, so I can already tell this is going to be pretty useful. So let's fix our camera settings here, because we're getting depth of field on everything. Um, let's go ahead and set our target distance to 50 feet, and let's get a reasonable f-stop, let's say for outdoors, let's say 12, um, and a shutter speed of 250 and maybe an ISO of 200. Let's see what we get there. Let's go ahead and bring that down to 8.5. Okay, so now we're getting getting a pretty good exposure. Now, I think low quality is still it almost looks like depth of field, but it's just kind of blurry. So I think basically your difference between, let's just go to best and see what we got between these modes, is your anti-aliasing and your crispness, how crisp the image is going to get when it finally cleans up. Um, I don't know how long you'd have to wait to let this totally clean up, but probably quite a while. You can go ahead and you can set an SL level and a time. I um, don't know if there's a limit on this. So, doesn't look like there's a limit. I don't think I'll be waiting that long. Uh, you can set threads, um, and you can do this on the fly. So if you really feel that it's bogging down your CPU as you're working, which I haven't noticed um, as an issue really, but if you do see that happening, you can go and you can dedicate specific threads. But we'll leave that to zero, which allows all my threads working. Um, also, you can go and switch between your cams. Now, these all have different exposure settings. I haven't set any of them up, really, for uh, this setup. But that could be handy if you've got multiple exposures that you want to jump between, and a lot of cameras in the scene. And I think that's pretty much it, and you can stop it or restart it. Um, you also get the color channels like you do in any frame buffer. Um, I think once you do that, it breaks the link to the camera, so then you got to go and pick your camera. Um, also to note, when you do start this up, um, it might take you a minute to realize that by default, Active Shade is set to Scanline. You want to go in, change that over to Maxwell, and it'll be good to go. Um, so let's just take a look around. So, even at 
we're at best quality and it's pretty quick um, for this speed machine. This is a core i7-940 that is running probably I think at 3.25. So that's eight logical cores, two physical, and pretty good performance. Uh, okay, so let's play, see what we can play with. Um, there are some things you can play with in the render dialog with this up and running that'll interactively um, update. So time of day, get an interactive update with that, which is handy. You can also switch uh, between your regular sky dome to image based lighting. Go ahead and turn that one. So now we're lighting with this HDRI. Doesn't seem to slow anything down. <laughs> 